now with me, Rukuza Vengesa. I have a very packed studio this evening. The usual suspects, Simba Chiminya and Caps United Chief Scout David Sengu are here. And then very special guests indeed coming from uh, Zimbabwe's most successful football club. Uh, we have the interim head coach, Lloyd Chigoema Blanyo, as well as uh, Joel Lupatla, his assistant coach. And of course, a uh, Warriors legend, especially today we'll be talking about uh, the, uh, shall we say, the release of the 23-man squad for the upcoming 2025 AFCON qualifiers. I'm sure that will be leading the conversation from you, the listener. Of course, this is your show. We'll be taking your calls and reading your messages as well as speaking uh, to the coaches with regard to uh, the Dynamo's successful first preliminary round tie in the CAF Confederation Cup. Uh, they managed to overcome Zesco United from Zambia 1-0 on aggregate. Moving through to the second preliminary round, they'll be playing Orapa United from Botswana as well if you want to get an insight as well into the running of the club we have uh, a representative from Dynamos here David Chikomo is in charge of marketing there at uh, Dynamos on an executive level so maybe you want to uh, hear from him in terms of the running of the club maybe you can call in and he'll also uh, be answering any questions you may have but yes, it's a very packed show indeed. We might as well get straight into it with the story <coughs> of the day. Uh, just after 5 p.m. this afternoon, uh, Zifa announced the 23-man squad to take on Kenya and Cameroon in next month's AFCON qualifiers. Just uh, a reminder, if you missed out on that announcement, your goalkeepers will be Washington Arubi, Mali Tawaziwa, as well as uh, Bernard Donovan. In uh, defense, we have Gerald Takwara, Brendan Galloway, Munashi Garanganga. Um, and Rumbeba, God knows Mubira, <clears throat> Emmanuel Jalai, as well as Teenage Hadebe. In midfield, it's Marshall Munetzi, and Irno Mota, Jordan Zemura, Walter Sona, Daniel Msendami, Brian Banda, Tawanda Maswani, say, Richard Hachiro, and Tawanda Chirewa. And up front, Tino Tinda Kadewere, Douglas Mapfumo, Prince Duwe, and Obreo Chirinda will be there for the Warriors. And so, of course, uh, when you open the phone lines and read your messages, we want to hear from you. Just how strong do you think that squad is? Are you confident of it getting a significant number of points against Kenya and Cameroon? Both of those games will be played in Uganda, of course, next month. Uh, so not going to, of course, we still don't have an approved stadium here in Zimbabwe. Uh, do you feel it is enough for us to get a good start in this AFCON qualification campaign? Six games to be played in September. October and November and that will be its top two are going through to Morocco in 2025 but we do have Dynamo's uh, head coach Lloyd Chigoye as well as assistant Joel Lupasla in studio we obviously have to talk about the very good news uh, that emerged on Saturday uh, in the second leg there in Ndola uh, Dynamo's held CSGO United to a goalless draw ensuring we move through to uh, the oh, Dynamo's <laughs> we Zimbabwean club that is uh, moved through to the second preliminary round of the CAF Confederation Cup I want to hear starting from the interim head coach himself first of all good evening uh, Mr. Chigoye how are you doing sir? Good evening I'm okay Fine. Yes, uh, you do sound <coughs> fine. You do seem happy as well with the results. Talk to us about maybe the entire tie, starting with the first leg that was held in Khaboroni and then moving over to uh, Saturday's goalless draw against uh, uh, against Esco United in Dola. Just what was the game plan going into the tie as well? Was it always about keeping it tight at the back, uh, taking what we could find going forward and then making it difficult to beat uh, uh, in, in terms of going forward into, into the second leg? I'd say the modern game has a lot to do with research. You need to get to know the strengths and weaknesses of your opponents. Taking into cognizance that uh, <coughs> Zesco have been the flag bearers of Zambian football for the last uh, probably five years, they've been in the Champions League and getting to the group stages on numerous occasions. We knew that we were up against it. But obviously we wanted also to make sure that we raised the Zimbabwean flag high. We did our research, knew who their most dangerous players were, had a game plan for them, and made sure that at least we get a goal or two, and we indeed we got one goal. But obviously you don't have to be porous at the back, you have to be rock solid, and that's what we were in both legs. 
Okay, so in terms of Saturday's second leg, uh, just ahead of that uh, match, there was a lot of previewing, of course, about <coughs> the approach Dynamos was going to take. Was it going to be more, mostly focused on going for a draw? Maybe just give us your line of thinking as a head coach when you're holding an advantage from a first leg and then you're going away, <laughs> away for a second leg. Do you really just plan on saying we're going to make ourselves hard to get past defensively or you actually say let's try and you know increase the advantage get a second or a third goal in the tie how do you approach it as dynamos in in in, in this particular case against Zesco united mm, we knew that uh, from the very first minute they would want to overturn the deficit in uh, from from Cameroon. and uh, we obviously worked on our counter attack and uh, hoping that when they do uh, come at us in big numbers and we get a break <coughs> finish them off. But definitely, we also knew that we had to be very rock solid and absorb a lot of pressure. The plus on our side was whilst the, the crowd behind them, that crowd is not as big probably as the Highlanders fans in here. And we put that to our boys. But at least this crowd is manageable and it's one versus one. But indeed, it was not a strong in the pack. It was a very difficult match. The boys were tactically. Uh, disciplined and they played to instruction and they absorbed a lot of pressure but in the end I think it's off to the boys it's off also to the technical team brilliant technical team around me uh, speaking of the technical team <coughs> around you of course you have your assistant head coach here uh, we have uh, Joel Lupasla uh, of course a member of two Warriors AFCON squads back in 2004 and 2006 uh, Joel how are you doing this evening? I'm alright good evening good evening to uh, the listeners uh, thank you very much for coming through to the studio. You are a recent addition uh, to the Dimbare technical staff, of course, uh, after uh, Genesis <coughs> Mbombe left there. Uh, he, he joined uh, Lloyd Chigoe as his assistant. Just talk to us about your integration into the Dynamo's technical staff. How are you finding it at uh, Dimbare? Going, uh, uh, you haven't been there very long. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I, I knew coming here that it's not going to be easy. Uh, you know, coaching one of the biggest teams in Zimbabwe, there's always pressure. But uh, what is coaching without pressure? So if you want to grow, I'm still uh, an upcoming coach. I need to grow. So taking this job was always uh, going to be a difficult task. But um, I'm happy that I have my head coach here to learn from. And we, we come a long way. I know people will surprise me uh, by his, his uh, decision to have me here. But we come a long, long way, uh, I think, uh, 2015. That's when we started to, to work together when we were coaching in Division 2A here in Harare. So we've been uh, a big fan of each other. He's been there for me, even when I was at Eagles, uh, Golden Eagles, we tried to work together, but unfortunately we didn't have uh, much time because I left there. So for me, I think uh, I'm at home uh, because I'm here, because the head coach wanted me here. Yes, okay. Um, when we look at, I don't know, I, I, I tend to not want to compare <coughs> our football to European football, but we hear these days of assistant coaches having, shall we say, certain aspects of the game that they focus on. The head coach oversees the training, maybe tells them they want to focus on this and this, but the assistant coach will like focus on the strikers or on set pieces and things like that. What exactly do you focus on, Joel, as you've joined the, the Dynamo's technical staff, or you're just overseeing everything? Um... For, for me here, uh, I think I'm the most uh, energetic of the two, obviously. So uh, the coach will always uh, tell me what he wants to do, what he wants to, what's the, what he wants the team to, to work on. And then he will just give me those uh, in, in, in a rundown. Then I put together a program, then I present it to him. If it's okay, he gives me a thumbs up. Then we go and run uh, the program with the, the other assistant, uh, Kim Mura. So I think for, for us, uh, his assistants, we are running the show, but yeah, it's from him, it's from, it's from what he's, he, has, he would have given us, uh, to us. So what I will uh, say in short is that we do things according to how he wants us to do the things. Okay, uh, so let's just go back, of course, uh, to the head coach. Uh, Mablanios, people always uh, call you. Uh, you have, of course, previous experience of uh, leading Dynamos. This is no 
shall we say, new thing for you in terms of uh, taking on uh, this huge job at the biggest club in the country, a lot of people would say. Uh, going forward, you also have, uh, shall we say, an outstanding game in the Castle Rock, the Premier Soccer League, a game in hand. You still have to start your Chibugu Super Cup campaign as well. And then now you also have to look forward to uh, the Kaka Confederation Cup second preliminary round game. A tie, two more games, in, in fact. How are you going to be handling this now? Is your squad big enough? Do you feel confident enough that the squad can handle two games a week for a significant period of time for the rest of the season because the workload has increased now by your success in Africa? Mm, it is obviously a plus on our side that was during the Confederation Cup. And obviously the obligation is for us to complete our league program. And uh, everything you do, you take that into cognizance. You accept uh, the responsibility and you use your players expeditiously. We have a 30 men squad. Of the 30 men squad, uh, we lost uh, suddenly we will be the first leg in, uh, in Botswana. He's recuperating well. We hope he will be back maybe within the next week. Sorry, sorry, just to interrupt you. Uh, what particular injury does he have? He's got a tendon injury. Okay. Mm, and then. Uh, we also have uh, Anza Bojwe, uh, the, the, our defensive midfielder from, is, also, is also not been playing games for us regularly. So that leaves us with a squad of about 28, including our juniors. It is an opportunity for the juniors to take up the challenge and grow up quickly within the system. Because obviously, you know, I come from a youth coaching background. Yes, you do. And I will not hesitate to have those guys develop. We also have youngsters like Elton Chikona who will come in handy and will rotate the squad where possible and will find a way of navigating through. And obviously, uh, our top priority is to make sure that we main have a good run in the league and also that we get into the group stages of the Confederation Cup. But ultimately, we must also defend the Shibugu Super Cup. Okay, so just <laughs> to make things very clear, then, uh, Mablanyu, is there an actual hierarchy of the competitions? I know coaches always want to say, ah, we take each game as it comes, all of them are important. But it sounds to me, like you said, League, Confederation Cup, then Shibuku Super Cup. Am I correct in saying in that order, in descending order of importance to Dynamos? For us to be playing in the Confederation Cup, we want this Shibuku Super Cup. So it's quite critical for us also to want to be back in one of those competitions. But of course, uh, Dynamos, they have to fight for the league championship uh, as the big boys of uh, Zimbabwean football. Whether we like it or not, they, they have set a precedent which no one will ever catch up to. 22 league titles is no joke. So we'll give it a good shout and uh, hopefully our boys will not suffer from fatigue. Because like you said, there will be a lot of demand. I hope we manage our recovery programs very well and also the regeneration was uh, as you obviously said football has become very scientific so if you go about it and don't manage your your recovery levels then you'll suffer but we'll see how it goes it's uh, it's always exciting to be involved in many in many tournaments and in many challenges like we are is having them is an advantage having them uh, is a disadvantage Okay, Joel, just to maybe wrap up the Dynamo segment of this, you guys are currently 16 points off the top with the game in hand, yes? Mm -hmm. But you're currently 16 <coughs> points off the top with, what, 11, 10 games to play. Genuinely, is the title race still a factor in terms of Dynamo's moving forward, looking ahead, or oh, it's now the cup competitions? Because 16 points, yes, it, is, it seems it's still doable, still mathematically possible. But with the, shall we say, the state of Zimbabwe in football, how it's very inconsistent, you guys would have to go on a wild winning run and everyone else above you would have to start dropping points regularly. Is it genuinely still a title, a, a title a prospect for you going forward? This <coughs> uh, like uh, what the head coach has just said that uh, this is Dynamos and they've already uh, set a, a big precedence ahead. We cannot say uh, it's over. We cannot say our season is over. We need to fight uh, the fight that we saw in the past two games. Uh, we need to bring that into the league. 
and I hope the boys will, you know, uh, also respond to the league the way they responded to uh, to the Champions League. We need each and everybody. We need all the players that uh, are injured. We need these young boys that the coach spoke about to come into the party. And I believe that if we come together, we work very hard. It's doable. Seeing that uh, many teams they dropping points, uh, the top teams. Uh, they dropping points this week. Uh, FC Platinum drop, dropped three points. So if we can win our game in hand, then we see if we get a good run and also from uh, the tough confederations and the Chibuku, it might you know rub onto the league and who, who knows maybe we might end up uh, up there. Okay, so of course uh, I'm sure the listeners will come through with their own questions. I'm sure a lot of them are already asking about, uh, shall we say, the well, the goal scoring problem that some people say Dynamo <coughs> has experienced this entire season. But uh, Joel, I also want to get your thoughts on the big story of the day. As I said, you are a member of two AFCON squads uh, representing Zimbabwe back in 2004 and 2006. So maybe you're particularly qualified on talking about uh, the 23-man squad released by Zifa uh, uh, this afternoon. Uh, what stands out to you in terms of the squad that's been picked? Do you feel it's strong enough to give Kenya and Cameroon problems in Uganda next month? How are we looking uh, for the Warriors going forward? Uh, for me, I, I think it's a balanced squad. It's a fair squad. But um, obviously, you cannot have uh, a national team with everybody being in agreement. And uh, I know that I would have wanted to see a Kama Billiard in that squad, seeing how he's been playing. But I don't know the issue of him uh, and the national team, what's going on. But I would, have want, I would have loved to see him you know, bring that experience into the team because we really, really need that experience, in, especially up front. And also, locally, I would have also loved to see my choppy uh, giving it, uh, given a chance also, because the boy has been doing very well, uh, considering that he came into the PSA last season, and he's been consistent for the past two years. So I think it's always good that when players are doing well, they get you know that run. It gives them also confidence. But Basically, I think it is the same squad that uh, was assembled when we played uh, Lesotho in South Africa. So we hope for improvements from, from, from what we did. Maybe, I know we didn't play well, we didn't get the results versus South Africa, but the, the performance was better than Lesotho. So if we can build from there and maybe with the introduction of a new coach, who knows what uh, we, we might get. But we must aim to beat Kenya and maybe get a draw versus Cameroon. Mablanya, I'll move that question to you as well. How are you seeing this squad that was announced earlier today? Uh, do I look a part of the squad? No. So uh, to me, that's a very big omission. I'm surprised because he's been playing at a very high level. With one and not Sundowns, and I think uh, he's a very good player. He can play as a center back and play as a wing back. I also think we're not doing justice to the big boy, Tino Tenda Amringa, who was playing in uh, Mozambique, who was playing Champions League football. Uh, still very young, strong, uh, comfortable on the ball. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm surprised he's also not part of the squad because he, he, in the long run, I see him taking over as one of the center backs in the national team. But unfortunately, we have overlooked him. I also am surprised that Mapisa, who has played for the under-20 in the under-20 national team for progression's sake, we need to have progression. Youngsters coming from the like in Beba, was former under-20 captain, former under-23 captain. I thought also they should have given Mapisa. I think he's done very well in, in the short term he's been here. But of course, like Joe says, uh, when you're a national coach, it's very difficult to please everyone. There will always be issues about who has been included, who has not been included. In my opinion, I would also have taught the big man, that defender from my end, as Mdua, Peter Mdua. I think, in my opinion, he, the last time he played at Afcon, the last game we won to one year, day. very good game, solid and stable. And of course, uh, not being biased, I think uh, Frank Mkarat. Would, would, should, should, would definitely <coughs> got a lot of leadership qualities has been affected uh, most of this season by injury but I think those are national team material players but 
uh, I will not go on to criticize the selection per se, but that is my opinion. That is your opinion. It is, of course, very valid indeed. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that was our opening uh, discussion with our guests, uh, interim head coach of Dynamo Zaloi Chigoe, as well as his assistant, Joel Lupasla, the Dubai Express. Ladies and gentlemen, the show is open to you now. For your messages on our WhatsApp platform, 0772-162-651. You can also call me on that number, 0772-162-651. Alternatively, you can also call me on 0714-414-413. 0714-414-413. We have a listener already on line one. Good evening. You're live on Star FM. Indeed, it is me, sir. Who am I speaking to? Bamishi, please go ahead. Yes, I'm going to eh? Manchester. <laughs> 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 Not today, <laughs> There are just two games in. I'm not too far any two games in. Thank you very much for your call, Bamishi. And yes, uh, Novak Djokovic will be playing early tomorrow morning. Uh, he starts his tournament uh, early in Zimbabwean time in the morning there. Okay, you have another. Oh, okay, the line just dropped there. Uh, let's uh, keep trying, ladies and gentlemen. Here's another one. Good evening, you're live on Star FM. Yes, you're through to Star FM. Yeah, 